the, the things that bind us, you know, the kind of enlightenment values, the, um, you know, the values we believe in, the way, you know, the progressive things um, which we believe in are, are kind of decaying in the face of this challenge of globalization and modern technology um, and, you know, breakdown of social fabric in, in places. When you're looking at global problems, you have to look at the whole spectrum of possible uh, solutions and possible ideas. So some of it might be about development, some of it might be about diplomacy, some of it might be um, military. But, but you can't have a, a real technical solution if you don't actually think about all the other things that you could do. So when we talk about promoting the interchange of knowledge, ideas and discoveries, we're talking about science. We're talking about education, we're talking about language, we're talking about literature, we're talking about art, we're talking about football. Because you can, you can share your cultural activities. If you believe culture is what we all do, you can share your cultural activities, be interested in the other person's cultural activities, and through that interchange, you understand each other better than you're more likely to like each other and less likely to fear each other. By having young people around the world who are engaged in their communities locally, but have these global connections, then we're building a network of people who believe in the better, the safer, and the more prosperous world, which we're all trying to uh, achieve. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that when you're trying to build communities, whether it's Belfast, or it's Nigeria, or it's Pakistan, uh, or it's the United States, we're all human beings at the end of the day, aren't we? Which is why I think this idea of being a global citizen uh, is important. And, um, you know, making sure that we remember that the contribution we make is, is to ourselves, is to our families, is to our communities, but it's also to the world. Because when we do brilliant things, we're having a good influence on everybody else uh, as well. If you keep people talking about culture, about science, about education, about sport, then that understanding stays in place. And what's the, what's the counterfactual? What's the alternative? You know, it's isolation. You know, break, you know, it's back to the Iron Curtain. And look how long that took to uh, address. So the point I'm making, really, is that you know, an organization like ourselves, this is what we do. So how does it change in the world that we're in at the moment after the, um, the referendum? Well. It probably changes in, in two ways. Um, it, um, it changes because if you ask me what you know, the list of countries that we work most with were, um, the top 30 would not have had any member of the European Union in, on that list of priority countries. Um, and the reason was that we, you know, we were all happily continuing along, saying, yeah, we've got great relationships with Germany, we've got great relationships with um, Poland, great relationships with Bulgaria. Uh, why do we need an active program of the types of things that I've been uh, talking about? Um, but of course, in the post-referendum world, um, it's a bit like, you know, you, the UK, as I'm sure you know, was very heavily involved in the eastward expansion of the European Union and uh, encouraging it. And um, the problem we have is we kind of invited people to the party, and then halfway through, we said, you know what? There's a better party down the road. Um, you know, and we don't really want you coming with us either. You know, I was in Belgium um, yesterday, and um, you know, people are saying, well, what were you doing? You're leaving us. You know, it's, um, you know, we're losing our friends. So I think there's a priority for us to make sure that the things we kind of took for granted, because, of course, you know, we always met fellow Europeans at events or uh, whatever, that we don't lose that in the post-referendum um, you know, deal, settlement, whatever it turns out to um, be. But the other one is um, a, a trickier question, which is, um, you know, we, we talk about, you know, that interchange of knowledge, ideas, and discoveries. And um, the danger for us is that, you know, we work with the creative sector. We, you know, we work with, you know, fashion. Um, they're inherently international. We work with universities. We work with people like you you're inherently international. So are we working with the 42% or 48% of the population and then working with people who are in, inherently international in, let's say, in, in Russia or in, in Germany um, and not actually reaching the whole of society? And 
are we creating a basis of friendly knowledge and understanding between people, but 48% of people? Now, that's the problem, because if we, if we say that we as the UK are trying to create genuine relationships going forward, then we have to connect 100% of the population with 100% of the population of the countries that we are partnering with. Because why would we want to have great relationships but only with some people, or only, only with people who think like us? So, so are we, as you know, the Cultural Relations Organization of the UK, are we genuinely connecting all of the UK, or just some of the UK, with all of the United States, and all of Germany, and all of South Africa, and all of Japan, and all of uh, Ghana? Are we genuinely connecting with, with all? Because if we're not, then you know, we're in for a surprise. And if, we, and if we're not doing it internationally, um, then you know, it, it kind of doesn't really work domestically either. So I think we have a duty organizationally for ourselves to say, you know what, we need to make sure that culture, the things people do, for the whole of, of the country is connected with the whole of the culture uh, internationally. In the 1930s, there were rooms of people like us um, and who really believed in good education, who really believed in giving people opportunities, who really believed in having an international outlook and seeing everybody as part of um, you know, the, the same hum humanity. People said, you know, they're never going to elect Hitler, um, there won't be a war, the worst will never happen. If people like us don't engage and don't say, I'm going to go and I'm going to you know, create this basis of knowledge and understanding between people, then bad things will happen. We leave a vacuum. We leave a vacuum for the people like ISIS. The things we believe in, which you know, make us all part of the, uh, you know, this, the same human race, makes us all global citizens, those values, we can't take them for granted. Civilization is fragile. Uh, and if we, as the people who've benefited from the upside of being able to travel and the upside of getting a great education and you know, standing on the shoulders of previous generations, if we don't make our contribution to do that, then, you know, what hope is there? But that said, I know we will. Thank you.